we have first of all if you would silence your cell phones you'd really appreciate that so it doesn't interrupt our proceedings and second of all after we call the roll and approve the minutes the way it works is city staff will present on an item once they're done presenting it's opened up just to the Commission for technical questions once we're done with our technical questions we open it up to the public for comment and questions you would step up to the microphone and state your name and address so we have them for the minutes after all people who have desired to speak have had that opportunity it comes back to the Commission for discussion and a vote, and then we just move on from there. Now let us call the roll. Kathleen Krupp, Ed Bowen, Steve Cummings, Michael Ford, John Hintz. Here. John Kiefer, Robert Weigart. Here. Thomas Perry. Here. Andrew Mott. Here. Derek Grove. Here. Thomas Boyta. Here. Moving on to approval of the minutes from November 20th. Do we have any additions, corrections, deletions, etc.? Motion approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion clearly passes. Let's start with other business. We have a new commissioner, Derek Grohl. Thank you very much, Derek, for joining us. This is the Glamour Commission. So uh, you, will, you will enjoy the fame that we all do from membership on this group. We have wonderful discussions. It's really a good group to be a part of. I think you'll enjoy it very much. With that, let's move on to item number one. Specific implementation plan amendment request for vehicle sales at 1911 West Snell Road. This is laid over from last time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. um, would it be the pleasure of the Planning Commission to have me uh, just touch base on the things that have changed since we last spoke? Or would you please, like the Please, whole? please. I was hoping that was the answer. But. Okay, so we heard this at the last Planning Commission meeting. Is it specific implementation plan request for a vehicle sales? Uh, at 1911 West Snell. We previously discussed it at length at the last meeting. Okay. Um, so we had quite a lengthy discussion about the proposed use, um, the applicant's history of what he's been in compliance with, kind of the, the fact that this parcel has went through numerous variations of plan developments. Um, he's currently not in conformance with the latest plan development is seeking to add auto sales as a permitted use within his plan developments. Along with that, he's looking to do a building addition and then uh, the requirements that go with it. So staff did a little more research into this after our last discussion. There was some questions related to the size of the outdoor storage area, um, some environmental concerns, things of that nature. So staff did look through this. Um, we'll quickly go through the PowerPoint just to touch base on the basics. Um, this was a pr the previously approved plan. You can see it had a limited amount of outdoor storage area. Um, there is some missing fencing that needs to be rectified. We are requesting that that be done. Uh, we touched on landscaping. This is the currently proposed plan. The applicant is looking to approximately double their outdoor storage area. Um, staff is making some requests for some signage to be removed that is no longer used. We touch base on the history of the aerial photography, kind of showing how the site has expanded over the years. Um, largely not in compliance with previously approved plans. So to touch base a little bit on the things that we talked about last time and why we're recommending what we are. So staff did look at the discussion of should we permit this increase in the size of the outdoor storage area. Um, staff is of the opinion that we are in favor of increasing the size of the outdoor storage area with the understanding that Everything that is currently on that site, that is the tractor trailers, the semi-trailers, all of those things that are currently not appropriately stored and do not meet code, granting him the larger storage area and saying everything must be within that outdoor storage area. We're going to give you one defined space with a nicer fence and you have to keep everything in that. So no more of this um, tractor trailers, semi-trailers, tow trucks, towed vehicles, all of those things we are recommending he be required to keep inside his new larger and closed storage area. So that is our uh, thought process and why we are okay with doubling the size of the outdoor storage area. Um, basically getting the, the stuff from outside the site, at least putting it inside an enclosed fenced area to help kind of mitigate that view. Um, so time to talk about the, the recommendations. We are recommending approval of this plan. Um, we did talk a little bit about the environmental aspect. I know uh, Mr. Hintz had brought that up. 
Staff has been in contact with um, the state Department of Natural Resources. It is generally not something handled at a local municipal level just because we don't have the means for doing it. So we are in contact with the state about the requirements of what would need to be done on this site. Um, so base area modification was previously granted to reduce the transition yard on the west property line. Staff is recommending that that may be maintained. Um, the site and business maintained and operated per the submitted plan and that there be no expansion or change of use on the site without further, further approvals through the plan development process. Outdoor storage of all parts, fluid, tires, inoperable, unlicensed vehicles, other automotive service related items shall be prohibited in all areas other than the approved and closed storage area. No outdoor storage shall be permitted outside of the approved and closed area. So we're trying to tighten up that regulation of saying everything has to be within that outdoor storage area. Towing related fleet vehicles are limited to parking locations under the existing metal canopy. Um, that was taken from the 2006 <coughs> approval. Staff is recommending we maintain that. Uh, driveway, driver access to parking stalls should be brought up to the city standards for hard surfacing per section. Here we just included the actual section just so there is no um, <coughs> ambiguity. We're saying you must meet the standards. Here are the standards within the city ordinance. Outdoor storage <coughs> shall be fully screened with an eight foot solid code compliant fence. And again, we included the section. So there is no uh, ambiguity. This is the section that you must meet with that fence requirement. We still recommend the site be limited 21 vehicle sales spaces. And those are based on the fact that the applicant has a required parking loading calculation. When you take out the required loading off the spaces available, 21 are remaining. Staff recommend those 21 <coughs> could be used as we do want them, however, identified through site signage as these are the vehicle sales locations. Um, applicant should provide a fully dimension and scaled parking lot plan. Um, right now the parking lot plan is not quite to scale. Uh, there's a little bit of, of vagueness in it. We want a fully dimensioned parking lot plan that we as staff can review and then bring that back to plan commission for approval so we can make sure it is fully code compliant. Um, parking lot shall be striped in accordance with that approved plan. Right now it's, it's not striped, it's just kind of a big uh, sea of asphalt and concrete. No parking shall be permitted outside of the legally established and striped spaces. So Glenn saying, this is your parking area, this is your auto sales area, vehicles can be parked those in accordance with those uses, nothing else on the site. Applicant shall provide stormwater management plan once the 20,000 square feet of total disturbed area is reached. Site shall either be brought into conformance with the 2008 landscape plan that we touched <coughs> on last time or brought up to current standards. And then here we get into some of the newer stuff. Um, Excuse me, this is still old. The building addition shall be constructed the same material type and color. Final building um, addition <coughs> elevations approved by the Planning Commission. Outdoor storage area plan shall be reviewed and approved by the Planning Commission. So, why don't they have to provide actually a written plan and a site plan for the outdoor storage area of actually how they intend to use it, what the use of that um, outdoor storage area will be? This is the new all vehicles in parking spaces shall be in operable condition for safe and legal performance within the public right of way. That is using the standards we have for parking of vehicles throughout the city. So just making sure that those vehicles that are parked there are legal, safe, operated vehicles. They're not junk vehicles. Then we added some additional conditions here. All track, all semi-tractors, semi-trailers, and towed vehicles shall be stored within the enclosed storage area again. So that's getting at making sure there is no ambiguity and we're saying everything has to be inside that outdoor storage area as approved. <coughs> Permitted uses shall be limited to auto truck repair, auto service, towing, auto parts, and auto sales. For the purpose of clarification, auto salvage is not a permitted use, and vehicles shall not be dismantled or sold for parts on the property. So in the applicant's <coughs> request, he requested all uses allowed in that district. Staff is recommending that they be limited to those uses the applicant says he has on site and those that he wants to do. Basically, we're looking at if he wants to expand outside of what this plan is saying he can do, we would want him to have to come back to this body, not just open it up for anything allowed in that district. We really wanted to touch on the fact that auto salvage is not permitted here. Auto sales, yes. Auto repair, yes. Auto salvage, not an allowed use. No keeping of any, uh, no vehicle of any type shall be kept within the enclosed storage area for a period to exceed six months. The enclosed outdoor storage area shall not function as a salvage yard and shall not store vehicles that are being sold for parts or scrap. Again, we're just trying to get the fact that the applicant is saying he runs auto sales, auto repair. We do not want this to be a salvage yard because that is not a permitted use. All right, thank you, sir. Technical questions. John. Um, I have one question, and I don't know if it was talked about with staff, and I know we didn't talk about it at last meeting. But because, it, they have, because of the towing service, 
they're going to inevitably have vehicles that are going to need to be scrapped that are going to be on their property. Um, is, is there some kind of <laughs> you get where I'm going with that loophole right now? Because if you well, he does own it. I mean, the, the applicant does own an uh, El Salvage yard on the south side, so he can okay. So, so, so nothing on this site, he can take it to another site if it's going to be scrapped, correct? Okay, good. Uh, thank you. Other technical questions from the commission? Ed, just a, out of curiosity, I guess the stormwater management <clears throat> requirement. Um, I'm going to. I'll channel David Borsick here real quickly. Um, the the 2,000 square feet um, that's mentioned there is that a is that a requirement? Is that a, a threshold that triggers a, a stormwater management plan? Where did that 2,000? Uh, the 20,000. 20, 20, 20, square feet is within the, the city's stormwater management ordinance. So once you have okay. 20,000 square feet of disturbed area, you're okay. That kicks in the, the stormwater management requirements for the city. Got it. And and at that point, then a full. Full stormwater management plan, including calculations and all that sort of stuff, will be required to be submitted and adhered to. Correct. Got it. All right. Other technical questions? So it was mentioned that the city has contacted Wisconsin DNR at this point? Yes. To, to find out the, uh, Mr. Hintz had had some concerns about the environmental aspect of what was taking place on the site with leaking fluids, stormwater management uh, permits, those type of things through the state. Um, as, as that's not quite um, in our general purview of what we know and what we understand, staff has reached out to the state to find exactly what permits, what code requirements they would need to maintain for those uses. I would uh, put something in here that we had proven contingent upon and maybe just lay it over <coughs> contingent upon what the DNR says. Okay. The DNR. Well, the DNR is a higher authority, in, in my opinion, and therefore it's not necessary to do that because they would trump uh, anything that we do. Yeah, I, I think it would be important to understand whether or not they fall within some of the permits that are required under NR216, Wisconsin State Codes, so, which they may in this case. The key is auto salvage. And any exposure to stormwater, including tires and batteries and all those items, if they're gonna, if they're gonna close them, if they're gonna put them within a building, that's that's great. But that <coughs> aerial shot shows me that they have not done that at this point. Other technical questions? Just from technical questions, we're not approving a salvage yard, though. Yeah. So it's not approved okay. as long, a salvage long yard. As it's you know. And that's clear. clear. We're, we're trying to make that clear um, in, with the, with this action, with, with with the recommendations that we put on here. It's not supposed to be an auto salvage place facility. Okay. And you've got that clarified in seventeen. Yep. Got. It. Okay. And in item three too. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Any other technical questions? Okay. Seeing not anyone here from the public to speak to this item today. What's that? So many, so many, I can't remember. Only once, twice. Okay, nobody's here to speak to the site. That public commentary is closed. Back to the commission for discussion. And <coughs> what shall we do? I move the motion with conditions as outlined by the um, department staff and present it to us tonight. Second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Go ahead, John. I just want to say one thing for city staff. Thank you for. Uh, <laughs> tightening this up for us because as we know we have spent a lot of time going round and round about things on this and this this clear clarifies everything quite well uh, so I would great, add, thank great you job. and good luck <laughs> <laughs> anything else all right let's call the roll Feiger aye Terry aye Mott aye Grove aye Bowen aye Cummings aye Hintz aye Boyd aye Motion carried 8 0. <coughs> Item number two two lot land division and certified survey map at 601 West County Road Y. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, this is a request for a two lot land division located at 601 West County Road Y. The subject site is approximately 95 acres in size and is the location of several county facilities, including uh, on the screen at the air photo. Got the county uh, recycling center at the north uh, east corner. 
the county sheriff's department at the, towards the southeast corner and then the county highway department the county is requesting to divide off a small little parcel along county road y right up here um, for a potential institutional residential use the proposed parcel i'm going to zoom in here there we go the proposed parcel is um, Plan to be 60 feet wide by 120 feet deep and, and 7,200 square feet in area, which meets the uh, minimum lot size requirements within this district, which is um, I institutional by the way, it's institutionally zoned. Um, the, the property does have access <coughs> to city water located along County Road Y. However, um, there is sanitary sewer in Y, however, that's a city uh, or a sanitary force main and connections to force mains are not permitted. Uh, looking at their other options, um, they could tap into sanitary sewer on Jackson Street, but that's about 1,600 feet away. Uh, there is a um, easement running along the west property line with the sanitary sewer, uh, which is about 1,000 feet away. So. Uh, unfortunately, these two options are probably not feasible uh, to the, the great distances to them. So more than likely, they're going to have to either uh, construct um, holding tanks to serve as a, for their sewage system, or they do have the option of uh, constructing an on-site septic system. I did confirm that with the city plumbing inspector, and he said that would be allowed in this particular case. Um, one um, thing missing on the CSM, which staff wants to uh, include, is a note indicating that uh, city sanitary sewer will not be available to Lot 1. Uh, looking at Lot 2, um, which is the larger of the two parcels, it's approximately 94.9 acres in size. Uh, 1,667 feet by 2,500 feet roughly. Um, the county is planning no additional uses or modifying existing uses to this site. Uh, just more or less, it's just the parent parcel which is gonna be used to create the, uh, the proposed institutional residential use. Um, staff is also recommending a condition to place access restrictions along both um, County Road Y as well as Jackson Street, those are Jackson Street's a minor, minor arterial and uh, County Road Y is a collector. So we like to limit the uh, number of driveway openings. So we are recommending a condition be placed to, uh, or a condition to place these access restrictions besides where existing driveways exist. Um, initially, when staff reviewed this, um, with County Road Y being a collector, um, our comp plan recommends a 66 foot right away for collector streets. When looking at um, how the uh, how County Road Y on the east side of Jackson Street um, within the last decade was expanded to a four-lane um, highway, and is uh, currently mapped at an 80-foot right-of-way, so staff is uh, changing our opinion of that, and so we are recommending in another condition to increase the right-of-way width on the south side of County Road Y to a 40 uh, 40-foot. 40 foot right of way south of the center line of the existing um, highway. So with that, staff is recommending approval of the two lot land division um, with the one condition that was in your staff report, um, putting the, on the access restrictions along Y and Jackson Street. And then um, we did add two new conditions. Mm -hmm. The first one um, would be the dedication to obtain 40 feet of right of way south of the center line of County Road Y, and then a uh, note on the CSM stating that city sanitary sewer is not available to Lot 1. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Technical questions? All right. Seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Um, we step up to the microphone, state your name and address, sir. I don't necessarily have anything else to add. My name is Attorney Sam Hall. I'm here on behalf of uh, Winnebago County oh. as the owner and the petitioner. So okay. I just wanted to make the commission aware that we're here and if okay. there are any questions on this or the next item agenda, All right. or the next thank item you, on the agenda to let us know. All right, thank you. Did you, oh, John has a question for you. Well, I can ask it the next time, next oh. one too. If, if yeah, let's wait until the next one, so. Anybody else is here to speak to this item today, this particular one? Okay, seeing on back to the commission. Motion to approve. Second. 
discussion on the motion. Yeah, we're good. All right. Seeing none. Oh. Um, I Ed? actually decided. No, it's okay. Um, CSMs uh, don't require council approval. They do not. So if we approve this, <coughs> and just for the sake of argument, the, the second item doesn't get approved, we've created a parcel tailored for that. The city just wouldn't sign the final CSM. Got it. Thanks. Okay, anything else? Okay, call the roll. Aye. Terry? Aye. Aye. Mott? Aye. Rose? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Cumming? Aye. Pin? Aye. Boyce? Aye. Aye. Motion carried with amended condition. Item number three. Conditional use permit request to establish an institutional residential use at 601 West County Road Y. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Um, so this is for the same site as the previous item. <coughs> um, they, the county is applying for a conditional use permit for a institutional residential use for the uh, newly created lot. Um, the institutional residential use is for a facility for a county resident convicted of a sexual offense and deemed ready for release. Um, Wisconsin statutes require the county to identify a suitable place of residence for the offender. Um, the subject parcel meets the parameters of the statute, uh, returns the offender to his local community and is close to law enforcement who can monitor the situation. Um, there will be only one single resident um, on the subject parcel and the county intends to use a pre-manufactured home for the residents. Uh, state law imposes some limits on what can be located within a certain proximity of the parcel. Um, schools, child care facilities, public parks, places of worship, or youth centers uh, cannot be placed within 1,500 feet of the parcel. Um, the county owns the surrounding land beyond 1,500 feet of that parcel, um, so the applicant can reasonably guarantee that land within that proximity will not be used for those purposes. Uh, staff is in support of the institutional residential use as the proposed site does seem appropriate uh, based on the surrounding county government land uses. Um, there have been no plans submitted for the site, um, so staff is recommending a condition that a site plan, uh, landscape plan, and building elevation plans be submitted. Um, as previously mentioned, a sanitary sewer connection or other on-site <coughs> sewage system will need to be provided for the site. Um, <coughs> staff is al also recommending that the use be limited to a maximum of one occupant uh, with no direct access provided uh, from County Road Y. And here's what was submitted for the subject site. And staff recommends approval of the proposed CUP for the institutional <coughs> residential use as proposed with the findings listed in your staff report and the conditions that a final site plan, landscape plan, and building elevation plans be submitted and approved by community development. A sanitary sewer connection or other on-site sewer system be provided for the residents as approved by community development. The residence is limited to a maximum of one occupant and the direct access may not be provided uh, to County Road Y from the residents. Thank you. Technical questions, folks. Go ahead, Thomas. Um, so I would like to ask the applicant about the prefabbed house and how many bedrooms that they are initially planning to have with that home. It's, it's li they're limited to one occupant, so I can't imagine they didn't move one bedroom. Mm -hmm. There will be more <laughs> bedrooms than one. It has to be bedroom, possibly for staff. If we're talking about the type of person we're talking about, I'm sure there'll be two staff on, one awake at all times. All right, we'll get to that as soon as we do. And other technical questions? Okay. Yes. Um, so, in the event <clears throat> this is no longer needed to house, I mean, we're housing one particular individual. In the event that this individual is no longer being housed here, is this going to be a permanent structure, a semi-permanent? I guess do they, do they plan on removing this if it's no longer necessary? I guess what is the that that would be? That's a yeah, technical sorry. question, but probably appropriate for. Well, it's a good question. <laughs> that's that, that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. I'm kind of curious. What? Okay. Yeah. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, there is. I think we can agree there's a lot going on here. From, yeah, and right now from our standpoint with the conditions and the conditional use permit, that would go, it would be going forward in perpetuity, so they could. You know, right, that's, I think that was something I was kind of thinking here is that we Correct. we may want to, if, if we put conditions on, or we put timelines on conditional use permits to review after a certain period of time previously, mm -hmm. this certainly would lend itself to that. Okay. I, I 
I think, in my opinion. Other technical oriented <coughs> questions? Okay, seeing none, I'm in here from the audience to speak to this item today. Some questions for you, sir. Also, we need, we, need, we need an address for the minutes. Um, sure. So, again, my name is Attorney Sam Hall. I'm with the law firm of Cravello Carlson. The address is 710 North Plankenton Avenue, uh, Suite 500, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53203. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm an attorney that's uh, representing Winnebago County and attempting to comply with this new statutory framework that brings us here today. Um, so I will try to answer the questions that were raised here. Um, first, in terms of the um, mobile home, uh, it's, we're currently looking at a, a two-bedroom unit. Uh, again, mindful that it would be one person residing in there, uh, but two bedrooms will afford a little bit more room for monitoring and things like that. Um, in terms of what the future holds it, with this particular site and parcel, even after this particular uh, offender may no longer reside there, um, I think that's why we're proposing uh, a mobile home, because we just don't know, frankly. Um, so, so that the commission has a little bit of background on the, the statute. About a year and a half ago, um, the statute was approved by the legislature to essentially what, what I describe as return to sender. Uh, when a, a 980 sex offender uh, is um, going to be subject to supervised release, the statute wanted to or the legislature wanted to return that offender back to their local community. Um, this particular offender uh, lived in Oshkosh uh, in the downtown area, um, and so the statute directed that Winnebago County find a suitable location for, for him to live, consistent with all of the setback requirements from daycares, parks, schools, and the like. Um, and so as you can imagine, there were not uh, a ton of sites that would satisfy all of those requirements. Uh, this site did, had the added benefit of uh, being close to the Sheriff's Department as well. Um, and so frankly, that's why we're here. In terms of what's going to happen in the future, frankly, at this stage, uh, we just don't know. Um, it, it's unclear, <coughs> not only for Winnebago County, but any other county throughout the state, uh, how many 980 offenders um, you know, may end up being uh, released with uh, supervised release. and so. It's possible that when this offender is ready to leave, there may be another one that's uh, going to be released, or it could be that this is the only one that Winnebago County will ever have to find housing for. We just don't know yet. Um, finally, in terms of um, the timing, you know, we've reviewed the, uh, the staff's um, analysis and conditions, and, and frankly, they make sense to us. Um, from our standpoint, there is some urgency to this. Um, the, with this statute, there's very tight time frames for the county to find suitable housing and ultimately for there to be a release. And so obviously we'll comply with all of the, um, uh, the um, conditions that staff has outlined here uh, if the commission approves this. Um, but we're, we'd ask that we'd be able to try to expedite things as much as we can because we are under a court order um, to uh, to find suitable housing for this offender. So with that, I, I hope I addressed all the questions, but if I missed anything, John, please let me yeah. know. Um, that addressed some of my questions. Um, the bigger one I had besides that was, if we're doing this for one person now, and I don't, and I know we can't know in the future how many there would be in the future, I mean, are we gonna look at maybe three, four of these out this area possibly because there's nowhere to put the people in Winnebago County? Is this something we're looking, that we could potentially see coming back to us and all of a sudden we have a community of, you know, undesirables. I granted they're out of town and near the sheriff's office, but just trying to kind of put the long-term picture together. And I sympathize with that. Unfortunately, <laughs> I, I, it, it's, we just really can't say. I can't stand up here in good conscience and tell you that you're never going to see us any, ever there again. There been any discussion about potentially doing this again out in the same area with other people? No. I mean, we know that there is one other offender that is not subject to this current statute because they were, their supervised release was a pre right. previous, that we believe the state is currently searching for housing. But um, this, is the, this is all we know of as of now. Okay. Thank you. Ed? Um, to, uh, to Tom's point, um, the, can you describe the nature of the supervised release, I guess? Is this, 
you asked about a two bedroom home. How, how is how supervised is supervised? Just give us a little bit of background. I think that would be helpful. Certainly, it, it's pretty significant. Um, it, now, I, let me preface my comments by. Uh, we're at the stage in the court proceedings where now the state is going to be preparing a formal supervised release plan, okay. uh, which has not yet been submitted. So um, generally speaking, maybe so if you could comment on cor how correct. this typically works. Yeah, so my comments are in a general sense, sure. uh, it, it's a lot like being in a prison. Uh, you know, I mean, the, the offender will be on, essentially on house arrest, no av availability of internet. Uh, they'll have people that are there monitoring um, and, and again, that the the uh, offender is is going to be in the confines of this structure uh, while they're on supervised release. Again, there may be more details in this particular offender's um, okay. supervised release plan, but as a general sense, the the 980 framework for supervised release is is pretty significant. Okay. Yeah, and I think not a lot of us. I certainly don't have any familiarity with that, so I think that's that's helpful for us to know. Um, I guess are, are you. Would you be agreeable to a, uh, and, and I don't know if we want to do it frequently, I it, we'll kind of leave that up to we can discuss, I guess, but some sort of review of this conditional use permit in the future that would capture, if, if something's not going right, we can catch it. If we, you know, if it's not being utilized, if it's still necessary, um, it, it would give us the ability to kind of test this out and, and see, I guess. Here's my only concern with what you're suggesting. I understand why you, you, you bring this up, but my only concern is the county is under a statutory and court-ordered obligation to identify a residential option. Mm -hmm. And right now, our ability to identify this residential option is conditioned on, Contingent on us your commission it. approving right. it and ultimately the Common Council approving right. it. And if you add mm -hmm. a stipulation that would require us to come back in let's say three months or six months or something like that I, uh, that could be a fair interpretation to say this isn't really an option now to get to be, just for you i think it, what we've done previously and when we've when we've reviewed conditional use permits has been two years three you know a period of time that you've got enough you know you can accomplish your statutory requirements your court order requirements and we just get a sense for how things are going to go, I guess. Here's what I would suggest and propose is instead of setting a, a date timeline on this, uh, perhaps have us come back when this particular offender no longer is going to reside at this property. That way, from our perspective, we can go into court and say we have a residential option for this offender and we, if we have the conditional use permit, we know that that will be true. Um, and then you all will have the peace of mind also to know that once this offender is no longer going to be residing, the county would come back and get, basically check in to see did this work, did it not work, yeah. you know, what, where do we go from there. I, from my perspective, if we set any type of arbitrary date, even if it is two years down the road, I'm, I'm concerned that, that some could attempt to say, well, that then this isn't really a guarantee. This is really just a temporary placement as opposed to a permanent, which is by law what we're obligated to do. And, and by law, I guess, what is, and again, generally speaking, the typical time frame for this type of supervision period is, can be six months, it can be six years, 60 years. I mean, I, again, it's, no, a great, it's a great question. And it, it varies depending on the offender and yeah, the offense yeah. and the age and all of that. Um, it just varies. I, I, I can't. I don't. I don't want to mislead you. No, so I, I don't want to give you. Any no, and, and I appreciate it. I think we. You know, I don't know if any of you guys know a whole lot about all this, but I no. certainly don't. So, that's, that's, so um, to the to the uh, planning department, why does this become an institutional residential use rather than a regular in, uh, regular residential use? Because it fits into the into our definition in the zoning ordinance of what an institutional residential. It fits in the definition. It fits within. Say we wanted to change this to just a, a single family residence, we would have been looking at a comp plan amendments, a zoning, potentially spot zoning, looking at you know putting a single family in an in institutional zoned area. Staff felt that the fact that the, the intended use met the definition of institutional residential, it made sense to utilize what was already available. Okay, so if they want out for whatever reason, the gentleman doesn't, the, the individual doesn't live there anymore. 
uh, found an alternative placement, whatever, and they want to sell it, they, they just can't sell it as a residential property. No, unless... But it couldn't be sold as just a traditional Because you would have to go through and get the proper zoning. Correct. Institutional does not allow single-family residential as a permitted use. Not to mention it's still county property. So it would have to go through the county yeah, approval. Okay, so um, also one other follow-up question is, is, are we able to add a condition that the home being placed is no larger than two beds? And my concern is, is that once it's larger than two beds, um, say if it's a three-bed home, um, the county could simply just petition the state for licensure as an adult family home, and then we have no limits on who can live there. The request right now before us is for a conditioning use permit for one occupant, so I would think it's, I wouldn't think it's unreasonably real, related to the request uh, under the statute. I think under the statute, that would be a reasonable condition for us if you wanted to. That would be a recommendation of mine. Do we have any more questions for this gentleman? I think we did, I mean, Tom, in, in that regard, we did put the residence as limited to a maximum of one occupant. I don't know if that can, cannot hold, though, if you can license the state and become a state-licensed adult family home. We, uh, there's some statutes out there on that, and I, right. I don't know. Uh, so don't, that's why I'm wondering if we can limit it to two beds to eliminate that potential of ever occurring. Maybe get some use that. No. I wonder would be. But there's, there's different statutes out there with, with respect to what, what, what Mr. Perry is talking about. That Trump, it's another local preemption for adult family homes and those types of uses. And it's a right, because if I was the county and I had one gentleman in there that costs the county to house that one gentleman, depending on his staffing needs, could be twelve hundred, sixteen hundred dollars a day. If the person is doing really well after a year, year and a half, I might try to put a second person in there to cut those costs to. Eight hundred to a thousand dollars a day. Um, I'm just concerned about getting to a third person, sure. which there is no say because of the state licensure. I mean, the, I think it's clear that the residents, whether it's if if he had four bedrooms in there right now, in, right now it says that the residence is limited to a maximum of one occupant. We could say the residence is limited to a maximum of one occupant and a maximum of two bedrooms. And then if we have to deal with those state issues down the line, we have to deal with the state issues and what they've, you know, said we can and cannot do over time. And it still allows them to do what they need to sure. do. Sure. Mm -hmm. We have anything else for the attorney? I, I have one question that might have, um, with respect to the maintenance of the grounds and the facility, is that the county, is it, it, who's taking care of that? So the county would be the landlord, and, and okay. just to maybe clear the air a little bit on this, that the county would be the landlord, the county would be charging rent, the, the, um, the supervision requirements in this case belong to the state, and so the state will be paying rent, the state will be responsible um, for supervision costs, and so the county has no incentive to to try to dilute our expenses or anything like that. We're, we're really stepping into the shoes of being a landlord, charging rent, maintaining the ground similar to any other landlord. All right. So I have another question then. So since the county's act in the landlord capacity, my assumption then is that they might contract um, the supervision of this individual out to a company like Attica or something like that. We don't have that ability. The, the supervision will be controlled by the state. And the, the state is responsible for developing his supervision program and plan. If the state has contractors that, and contracted companies that they can use that. Uh, they may, yes. All right. So I, I would really like to make sure that, see if we could put the two bedroom limit in there because I would be concerned about a contractor. Um, the contractors are in it to make money. Hmm. Um, and so if they can squeeze a few other heads in there, I, I, I would be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think and we only plan to put a two-bedroom unit there. We have no interest in putting a three-bedroom. And we're, we're recommending that condition. I mean, we can recommend the condition of the one occupant. We're going we're to sit with that. And then if you would like, we can, we can amend that particular condition and say at a maximum of two bedrooms. And we can go where that takes us. See what happens. Anything else, sir? Thank you uh, so no, much. thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else here to speak to this item today?
Okay, public comment is closed. Back to the commission. Ed. Um, I do. I do understand the concern regarding uh, a review period or a, or a sunset or anything like that of, of the condition lease permit. I, and, and I, the only concern that I'd have tying it to uh, the the particular offender no longer being there, I guess, is how how well that communication is going to be managed. I mean, I sometimes can't get the county and the city to mow the lawns the same time when they have property near each other. I mean, like, the communication might not be there to allow for something like that to happen. So I don't know. I, I do, I have a significant concern of establishing a use here that, in theory, can go on in perpetuity without, I mean, that, that's what we're doing with the conditioning yeah, department. It'll correct. go on in perpetuity. That's um, correct. And, and it does give me some some pause. I guess, I suppose, just to give us something, would you be, I mean, would staff be on board with a with a with uh, an additional condition to maybe review this upon release or whatever the term, correct terminology maybe, I don't know, of the individual that we're talking about here? <coughs> Something, that, something about termination of yeah, residency or something? Yeah, when that, something when like that, when that. You know, no longer, when it's no longer occupied or, or no longer in use by this particular offender or something like that, that, you know, we'll review, we'll review the conditional use permit or the conditional use permit. They need to reapply. I don't know. First of all, let's put it out to the group here. What are the yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I guess I, it's, it's a thought. I'm, I'm just concerned about establishing this in perpetuity. We are going to, we're doing some real heavy lifting for one person. And I... Well, and just, to, just to be very clear, if, we're, if the county is willing to do this heavy lifting for one person, this one person has some significant needs that need to be addressed. Right, and, and I'm not because trying they're to... Because they're not going to... I'm not trying to counties aren't going to build works. the house. I understand that. I yeah. absolutely understand that. I'm just, from, from the planning standpoint, I'm... We're a little worried about how we're handling it. We've done the. We haven't really. We've sunsetted some. We've we've rarely sunsetted them. Yeah. We've we've done. We've done we, we, no. We've done re-reviews after a certain period of time, yeah. and the intent of that re-review was, we were going to look at what other conditions that we might have to place on the site. So right. we did a re-review to say, okay, are there any other conditions that we might have to to apply? So that's why we did it. And there were uses like a batch plant. You know, uh, I think yeah. Country USA came under that. Yeah, uh, Country USA had a two-year. So, th so th but it wasn't as, well, that one did sunset because we sunset with the lease. Um, mm -hmm. But some others like that. So we did that just with the intent of what other conditions might we need to put on that request. I'm trying to think of, if you can think of any other conditions that we might need to place on something like this in the future. Um, this house is going to be used for this purpose forever. It would, I mean, the where it is, the way it's designed, it's designed specifically for this particular use. And even if the individual that they're designing this for is leaves for whatever reason, whoever is the contracted agent will find another person to come to bring in that revenue in order to maintain, um, you know. The services that they provide, or the or the sure. stream of revenue that they expect, and so it will always be this way. I'm sure that the, this home will probably be directly wired right to the sheriff's department. They can do that, um, if not through direct wiring or through wireless. And I mean, it's it's always going to be used for this house unless, for some reason, everything around it is sold and residential development starts. So. Yeah. I, which has been the dream of everyone on the north side of Oshkosh for three decades, and right. that's never going to happen. So. I mean, uh, unless there's a way to yeah, sunset it after this occupant is done with it and then it comes back. I mean, that would be the only other way that we can do it. Is, uh, and and it sounds like, in all honesty, that's... We're getting a whole bunch tree. of landlord, land, le lessee... Yeah, we're diving into some things that are... I mean, if, 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 the, yeah, if the group I'm went... The only way you can do that is if you put something down where it was every time it was vacant, it came back to us. And then, then you, you, you could be, you could be, yeah, well, I was going to say, you could be dealing with six times in a year. Yeah. I, you know. And there may be very little we could do. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, besides the one, two bedroom, one person. And if we have that groundwork laid down to start with, I think that we're laying down everything we can do 
because it's really, there's really not much it's going to come back to us for for us to do. And if they're going to try, and they can't expand out there without coming back through us, if they were going to try to do another property, you know, adjacent to it or something like that out there, because they'd have to rezone that too. So I mean, they're pretty tied into this little spot right in the middle of everything else. I think with the, um, with Tom's idea with the two bedroom, I think we've got it pretty nailed down. The other hindrance out there is we're dealing with the conditional use permits that laws, the statutes that's changed. Yeah, so, so it'd be hard to sunset. Yeah, conditional use out. permit is not quite what it what it was ten years Correct. ago. Correct. So I, I well, understand it was two years ago. Too, so. yeah. yeah, that's right. So it just seems like ten years. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything else, or can we? I agree with Tom though with <clears throat> the two bedroom limit on it. I think yeah. that would be sufficient to add to the one. Do we have a motion? I am number no, two. No, no, okay, I was going to say, I, then I'll move. I'll make. I'll move with Tom. Tom's uh, addition of the no more than two bedrooms to the one occupant uh, condition. All right. That. Any discussion on that? All those in favor of that? <laughs> Wish we could vote that way. <laughs> Call the roll on, on just his amendment. Okay, Iger. Aye. Perry. Aye. Matt. Aye. Grove? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Hinks? Aye. Boyhead? Aye. Is that it? Okay. Uh, motion no. carried, 8-0 with amended conditions. No, no. no, no. We just, no. We just oh. changed the... Correct. Now, now we have to... Oh. Are we ready to make I'll a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the amended conditions we have. Well, I thought that's what I was moving was with yeah. the amended conditions. That's okay. No. <laughs> oh, I'll say. Oh, good point. Yeah. But, okay, so let's do it again. This is for the whole shooting match. Okay. <laughs> Biger? Aye. Perry? Aye. Mott? Aye. Grove? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Coming? Aye. Pins? Aye. Boyd? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion carry 8 0 with the medic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're taking <home. laughs> Moving on to item number four. Zone change from suburban mixed use district to suburban mixed use district with a plan development overlay, general development plan, and specific implementation plan for commercial office at 1755 West 7th Avenue. We've seen this before. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You are correct. We have seen this before. This was at a workshop a couple of months back. This is the old AE Jewelers site, <coughs> excuse me, on the corner of Kohler and 9th. Um, applicant is seeking to move forward with the zone change and a general development plan and specific implementation plan to reutilize that site for his office. Um, it's approximately 1,300 square foot building that was formerly a jeweler's. Uh, the comprehensive plan calls for interstate commercial within this area. Uh, a little bit of background for you. The applicant in August of 2018 did seek a variance from the Board of Appeals related to the overall sign height. <coughs> That variance was denied um, in part because there, the board determined there was no hardship for the property and that there, <coughs> excuse me, there were other avenues that could be explored, one of those avenues being this zone change request at Associated Plan Development. So here's the aerial of the site. It is a relatively small site, uh, and again, only about a 1,300 square foot building, so a pretty small building there. Uh, here's the site plan of the site. So the applicant is proposing to reuse the existing pole sign, which is approximately 60 feet in total height. It currently has kind of that diamond-shaped cabinet on top of it, which totals out at the 60 feet. Um, as part of this request, their proposal would be to remove that existing diamond-shaped cabinet, reuse the pole, and put up a new uh, rectangular-shaped cabinet sign on top of that totaling out at right around 55 square feet. So it's a reduction from what's there today, but it still would exceed the 30 feet maximum height and therefore necessitate a base standard modification. Um, staff would be in support of the zone change. Um, generally, staff would not support a zone change to just look at sign issues. However, when staff reviewed this site, there is a uh, significant amount of other things taking place here that the applicant is looking to do and improve. So in this instance, because of those other improvements being made along with the requested sign changes, staff is in support of doing the zone change to allow the plan development to take place. Um, so there are no proposed um, access uh, changes to the site, no proposed stormwater management changes to the site. As part of this request, the applicant is looking at making some significant improvements and changes to the landscaping plan. If this will work for us. 
So the applicant is looking at removing two small trees that are at these locations, replacing them with new, uh, larger, uh, more substantial trees. I believe these are both ornamental crab trees they're looking at doing. The applicant is looking at redoing all of the landscaping along the south side of the building, which should be an overall improvement. Applicant is looking at doing a landscaping bed along the western side of the parking lot. This is kind of where the sign sits. Uh, right now there's no landscaping in that area, period. Uh, they're looking at adding an additional ornamental tree uh, along the south side of the building. And then something that's relatively substantial, they're looking at doing is, uh, some nature of hedgerow arborvita. So there's a residential neighborhood kind of, and we'll go back here. So there is a residential neighborhood kind of to the northeast of this site. When the development took place with CB, uh, CBS. CVS, <clears throat> now as cars come around this roundabout, their headlights shine right through between the buildings and into that residential area. So the applicant's proposing to put that hedgerow along here, a mixture of hedgerow arborvita, um, we can kind of discuss those exact plantings, but to help block that light from trespassing from the <coughs> roundabout commercial area into that residence, Staff really views that specifically as a, as a great improvement to this site, helping benefit the, the adjacent residential area. Um, we'll get into a little more landscaping as well. Staff is recommending, um, we've, we see this as a huge improvement south of today, but there's a pretty significant area along this portion that is still open and visible. It's about 30 linear feet of area. Staff would like to see 30 additional landscaping points be placed along this area. That's equating based on the shrubs chosen anywhere from only five to six plantings. Just to break up this, this paved area a little bit further. Um, the way the ordinance reads, the applicant could you know, choose to maybe group them here, make sure he still has sufficient snow storage area. If he wanted to maybe do a couple more here, a couple more here. We understand there still needs to be somewhere to put snow so we can't landscape that, that um, drive aisle completely, but just a couple more plantings, beef it up a little more. Staff feels that would be an even further benefit to this site. So then signage, the big portion of the request is obviously related to signage. The reason we're doing the zone change and the plan development is directly related to signage. So the applicant would be looking at removing the existing cabinet sign and replacing it with a new cabinet sign. One of the benefits of the new cabinet sign is the, um, the proposed owner is looking at doing and I'm trying to think of what the exact word is. They're basically backlit signs where the face is opaque and the only thing that is lit at night is the letters. So you don't have, like the current AE jeweler sign, the whole thing glows when it's lit up. So you have all that light coming off it. All of the signs the applicant is proposing on the west side of the building and the pole sign would be these internally illuminated signs that only the letters are lit. The rest would block light from escaping. So we view that as a benefit as well. There's gonna be less light illuminating from these new signs. Um, so they're looking at obviously a new cabinet on the west facade <clears throat> and then a new pole sign. Now the applicant did propose two separate types of pole signs. One meeting the code requirements for 100 square feet or less and one seeking a larger sign of 128 square feet. That 128 square foot sign would require again another base standard modification because it exceeds the maximum code height. In doing so the applicant proposed removing one of the two cabinet signs that currently exists on the south side of the building. Staff appreciates that. However, in this request with still a taller sign, and if we were going to entertain the idea of a larger sign and a taller sign, staff would recommend that we remove both signs off this south building facade. If the applicant wishes to have that larger, more visible sign on the pole, we think no signs on the south facade with the improved landscaping would kind of offset those two needs. So with that being said, staff is recommending approval. Um, so the applicant had also, the owner of the property, had indicated that they're willing to enter into um, a private deed restriction so limiting the use of the property, taking away some of those undesirable uses, saying this property cannot be used for that in the future. Staff generally doesn't go about that through the private deed restrictions, so we're recommending that a similar condition, so we'd have it both conditioned and deed restricted on the private side, saying that those adult uses as described in the ordinance would not be permitted to be used here. So that would go in perpetuity past just beyond this tenant. <laughs> a base on modification to allow the 55 foot tall pylon sign, and this shall apply only to this request. Any future changes to the sign should require the sign to be brought into compliance. We understand this applicant is making some investment trying to improve the site overall, so we can understand that sign request for this, but we would not want to see that sign 
say this property would change hand in 10, 15 years, to be allotted that same um, taller sign. Base standard modification to allow the 128.1 square foot pylon. And again, that's with the justification that there would be no signage on the south side of the building. Pylon and west wall signs would be the blackout style where only the letters are internally illuminated. And the applicant should provide 30 additional landscaping points along the southern edge of the parking lot. All right, thank you, sir. Technical questions. Yes, Tom. Um, so if they don't go with the 128 and go with 100, can they <coughs> keep the signs on the side of the building? Right now they would be legal non-conforming unless this board would want to make some type of additional conditions. You, you could say only the one sign and we're only giving you the 100 square feet. As the plan development, you do have kind of that. And that. the top one is a message board type of sign, correct? Correct. As shown here, the top one is a um, EMC. And is, do you know if that's currently operational? We'll have to ask the applicant. I believe there is possibly some repair that needs to take place to it, um, but he can verify whether it's currently in working condition. It was operational when the AEU was in there, uh, as, as recently as they were in there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can see over the years there's been some panels in it that had, have had to be replaced. You can kind of see the darker versus the lighter. Those are EMC right. panels that have been changed out. I'm just wondering because uh, the way you approach this building or the majority of the population approaches the building, the EMC would be probably highly used for help want it. Very possibly. I would use it for help want it. Yeah, and the, 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 staff, <laughs> I, the staff I think would be perfectly fine with saying one sign in the 100 square feet. When the applicant chose to ask for more than 100 square feet, that's where we came from saying, well, if you want to go even bigger, what's the, what's the trade-off? What's the benefit that we're, that we're getting in justification for that? In this instance, we felt that kind of direct correlation of signage to signage. So if we pass this and with the condition of the 128 square <coughs> foot and afterwards they say, yeah, we're not going to live up to that. We're going to go to 100 to keep these two boards. That's okay? They could, but they wouldn't. No. They could do 100 square foot, but if you want to prove it as it sits today, it says no signage on the south. Now, we could rewrite those two conditions, I guess, into a single condition saying the applicant either A, have 128 or none, or B, 100 and the one tenant panel. We could, you know, massage that to give them some flexibility if they so wish. All right. How we talk to the petitioner? Other, other technical questions? Okay, seeing not anyone here from public to speak to this item, come on up, sir. <coughs> Hi, John Davids, uh, you need my address? Yes. Okay, uh, 1560 Arboretum Drive, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 54901. Um, <coughs> I am proposing this as the hopefully future owner of that building. Uh, just to make a couple clarifications, sure. uh, Mark uh, mentioned um, the cabinet sign on the west facing side of the building. Uh, it's currently a cabinet sign, and what the what we're proposing there on the left-hand side um, yeah. that shows it in the daylight, and then what it would look like in the evening. Those are actually channel letter signs. They are still they, the block, like just so the they're like individual letters. letters. They're not that's, within that's a cabinet. It is. They're oh, okay. each are a letter letters. on a raceway, and they are illuminated from within. So just to clarify, it's not a cabinet technically. Um, and then on the pole, um, that sign, um, frankly, you know, we look for 128 square feet because it does make our, our logo bigger, but also it allows us to put a border around it, which I think is aesthetically more pleasing. Um, that just kind of looks odd and, you So know, that's the 100 like square it, feet. Like it's crammed in to me, you know. That's so that's we're you know substantial more cost to increase it to that size with I think probably more limited benefit to us in terms of getting our message but I think it's aesthetically more pleasing and I'm willing to make that investment so that's why I'm asking for that um, uh, all other I, I've met with the uh, concerned neighbors in the neighborhood they couldn't be here tonight they're on a senior center bus trip uh, but I met with them last week and um, they're all in favor of everything we're trying to do. The, uh, they would like me to have a longer hedgerow than what's uh, conveyed up there, and I'm completely happy to do that from basically what we're going to do for them. 
is to have it run from the southeast corner of the building all the way up to uh, it, it's beyond that clump of ash trees that are not there those aren't ash yeah they are they're ash beyond that clump of trees and so that will with almost all certainty eliminate that light from hitting and specifically his house you know um, you know again substantially increasing the cost of that landscaping it's doubling if not more of the size but I want to be a good neighbor and have them happy to have me there um, uh, the trees that were mentioned on the back side which would be the north end those are currently birch trees that are dead and or dying they're not lands uh, landscapers have told me they're marginally effective in this area we'd, we'd replace those with something that are more robust for the weather conditions here and would be ornamental in nature so um, I have no concerns uh, with what city's asking for um, you know I can go either way on what's on the south side of the building. Um, you know, I would like the 128 square foot if I can't have any signage on the south side of the building. If I have to have 100, then I would like to keep that message board. So, um, questions from anyone? Questions for the petitioner. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else here speaking to this item today? All right, back to the commission. Just a quick point. I, I did meet with, or I did speak with the adjacent property owners too about this particular proposal. So they were, as Mr. David said, they were in support of um, the proposed plan. Okay. Motion to approve with the recommendations. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Did we have any issue with the signage? Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to ask. Go ahead. The uh, condition number three, modification to allow the one. 28 was your suggestion was to go to 128 and nothing or 100 and something right? well my concern was is whether this the condition was an all or nothing um, type of thing so and 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 I also wanted to hear that he was okay with the condition which which he is gotcha. so wow. yeah he sounded like he wanted the 128 and was willing to get okay. the signage That's so fine. That, yeah, okay I just wasn't sure if we needed to yeah, yeah. but as it as it's currently written it is kind of the all or nothing you get the right. 120 yeah. you get no so I'd, okay if you wanted to tweak that a little bit we I think that's fine anything else all right let's call the roll sure. all right Perry. all right Ma Aye. Throw? Bowen? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Aye. Boycott? Aye. Motion carried 8 0. Right. Any other business before we adjourn the workshop? No, thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye